So now, what we're going to be doing a lot of times, we're going to talk about muscles and the names of muscles and the origin and insertion. So we're going to get back until you're up here. Okay? But that's the way it is. You're going to learn, have to learn the muscles, learn the names, origin, insertions, and actions. That's going to be a lot of what we do from this point on. We'll talk about bones and we'll talk about the landmarks on the bones because the reason why you need to know those is because those are where the muscles attach. And the more you can understand where those attachments are on the bones, you can understand the movement of the muscle there. But also you need to know those, like I mentioned before, for point lead. Right? A lot of these, the ones that, like I mentioned before, if you, in the notes, if you look for wherever the, the, the thumb is. And also on this side, there was more versions of the landmarks you needed to know. I took some of them off. Because there's basically one version that says, I think it's for the final, where it just has that whole list with all the different numbers. If you know all of those, that's the final, the top patient exam. So then the other list, the, the final one is derived from the other list, which goes through and it talks about different regions of the body, the face, the head, the neck, the arm, stuff like that. So, you know, it's like when we talk about all these muscles that you know, students have said, well, you mean we got to know all of that? You have to know all those muscles, all those organs, insertions. So you, you need to try to find ways that's going to help you to learn it, okay? And there's, it seems to me that there's easier ways to help you to find out to learn muscles than there is to study herbs. Because at least some of this makes sense. Like some things will go through the naming and things that, and these the words have a meaning. Okay. So when we're talking about naming muscles, the more you can try to break down the name of the muscle, it's going to give you a head start to try to understand what its origin and certain action is. Okay, so it's going to be named by, by the location of the muscle. So some of the things we have already talked about, you know some kind of locations, like if we say temporalis, where do you guess that's pretty much going to be somewhere in this area, right? And then intercostal, what's that going to be? Treatment lips. And then it has to do with the shape. So if you know different words for different shapes, like that way, they've heard of like a triangle shape, or if you know you you know, the animal house, right? What's the name of the front? Delta house, right? So it's a triangle. So the deltoid is going to be a triangle muscle. And then we have the relative size. Uh, so if you know medius, minimus, maximus, like when we talked about the glutes, obviously maximus is going to be the biggest one. And then directions of the fibers. Okay, so rectus meaning straight. So rectus femoris is going to run straight in this area here. Okay. And then there's some, some other muscles that are going to be oblique. Like we have, let's see, serratus. So if it's oblique, rectus is going to run straight and oblique is going to be more something to hang like it. Okay, you have external oblique muscles in the abdomen and you have internal obliques. And then you have one that's called rectus. So then it has to do with the number of origins. So muscle names are going to tell you how many origins they have or attachments. And then when you when you have The name also sometimes will tell what location of the attachments. And usually the origin is going to be named first. So sterno, right? We talked about the sterno already. What's what's this point here? Or what's another way to say clavicle? About clido. And then where's mastoid? Okay. So that tells you what's the origin and insertion of the plaster final mastoid being. Sternum, clavicle. And that's going to be what? The origin or the insertion? Okay, and then where's insertion? Mastite. So if the moat, and let's talk about on one side, if the insertion is going to move towards the origin, how's that muscle going to move? Like this, right? Okay. So what's the action of the sternocleidomastite going to be? It's going to be lateral flexion and rotation. Then you've got to be more specific. So we're going to say, is it rotating on the same side, of, towards the same side as the muscle, or towards the other side? Towards the other side, so we call that contralateral. And then is it lateral reflexing towards the same side of the muscle or the other side? Same side. So that's ipsilateral 
lateral flexion and contralateral rotations. Abductors, adductors, supinators, right? And then when you throw in these words, usually it's because there's going to be more than one. So one's going to be the more luminal, one's going to be more lateral, one's going to be more internal or external, or one's going to be more profundus, what does that mean? Deep. So then what's the other one that's going to be going on? Yeah, yeah superficial. So we'll talk about it in here. Flexor. It's torn profundus and flexitorum superficialis. And then there's, they're named sometimes based on their, the way that the uh, fibers were. You can have a fusiform muscle or an indipennate or a bipennate or a multi belly muscle or a convergence. So there's different me methods that you name muscles, you can put them together in different ways. So then you're going to have adductor longus. So what is that adductor muscle going to do? It's going to adduct. So if we have the word longus, what does that tell you? Yeah. If, if it has another descriptive term, it's not just saying that it's long. It tells you it's in relation to something else. You know there's going to be an adductor magnus, adductor brevis. Okay. And then here, what does this levator scapula tell us? Elevated scapula. Okay. And then you get kind of a little bit longer names. You know, those are going to be a lot in the forearm and then the lower extremity. And then these are just the ways that the fascicles run. So that sometimes are going to affect the uh, name of the muscle. So there's different things. Like here you have the orbicularis oculi, meaning it's going to orbit. So it's a circle that goes around the eye. And the 